is a walrus of a man, seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. The one good eye of this man feels you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. Grotesquely magnified by his plus six glasses. Amblyopia, a childhood condition. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Yet, he's unperturbed, holding his own. At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. Like a general over his maps, he plots his moves. Judging by the way he's licking his chops, it's going to be a good one. So... Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debardeurs Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Please, have a seat. The folding chair looks like a torture device. Extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Please, Mr. Dubois. Let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. Don't give up, but don't leave either. You're going to have this conversation on your terms. You just need to remain headstrong. Everard starts whistling a little worker song. He really is trying to ignore you. Or will you out of existence. The lieutenant stands right next to you, not showing any signs of impatience or boredom. I see you are an extremely stubborn man, Mr. Dubois. That ain't necessarily a bad thing. You did it. This might help against whatever comes next. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardeurs Union help a representative of the Rebischel Citizens Militia today? Oh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Yes. But you owe him for it. Yes, I know, Lawrence. 
He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. Are you all right, Harry? You say you got this, but you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, fuck. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Who does this guy think you are? Ronnie the Rookie? You ain't worried about no lost gun, or unpaid bill, or forgotten name. You're the bad cop. You're probably more corrupt than him. You cross your legs and yawn. The fat man does the same, sinking deeper into his chair than one would think is physically possible. He seems to be enjoying your little display. Good. Now lean in with some corruption. That we do, Harry. Let them say what they will about you and me. We're both born fighters. I do want you to feel at home, Harry, truly. But you'll have to excuse the humble accommodations. That's it. Now kick back and add a final flourish for dignity. You strike me as a reasonable man, Harry. I like that in a law man. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? What can Everard Clare do for you? I think we'd like to ask you a few questions. Don't you think so, Detective? Somehow you managed to get yourself out of this one. Now quick, keep the momentum up. Ask questions. Questions will show him who's boss. Whatever you do, don't ask him about the gun first. You don't want him thinking you're scared. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that.
But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines, incredibly talented at opening doors. I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Oh, no ones. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin-kicked my strongest man in the face. I saw it from my window. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? It was a figure of speech, Harry. Of course I don't have a window. I'm in a container. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Yes, but it's because his words usually sets things in motion. Oh, you're so clever, Harry. And technically, you're right. Now, what else can I do for you? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. That's what the Hanged Corpse called you. Harry. My God, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. 
It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. It's Harry. Harry Dubois. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. Sure, okay. You're Harold. Harmon. Haroldimus? But that's not what the record says. The record says Harry Dubois, a real man's name. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. As you look at the folder, Evera covers it with his hand and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any jolly fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell with this guy, honestly. Harry, you wound me, Harry, in the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. None taken. Do we have anything else to do here, Harry? Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back and working with him might be the only way to do it. Harry, Harry, I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. 
Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable, and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun-finding competition on our hands. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Aids. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you find your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. Whoa, that's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. Okay then, positive emotions it is. You like positive emotions. What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper, or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. It's a fortress. He knows she can't get in here. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. That much is true. His heart truly is in it. Though you wouldn't think so by looking at him. This particular brand of humor he has, it makes for a fine distraction. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in his expression or demeanor now. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. 
But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. 